Welcome to church. I hope you're doing well, church. Glad that you could be with us this morning. Come on, after a crazy, weird week, yet again in 2020, we're going to um, we're gonna declare, we're going to worship God this morning, hey? So come on, wherever you are right now, don't be uncomfortable. We're going to sing, we're going to worship, come on. I won't forget the wonder of how you roll Deliverance, the exodus of my heart You found me, you freed me Held back the waters for my release Oh Yahweh, come on, we declare this morning You're the God who fights for me Lord of every victory Hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn and part the sea. You have led me through the deep. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, we see the cloud. The cloud that day. Sign that you are with me. The fire by night, it got light to my feet. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters from my knees. Oh, Yahweh, come on, sing.
bush again this morning. Come on, we seek peace like a river. Peace like a river, wash over your holy name, Jesus, my everything, all that I am is yours, oh, Jesus, we sing, come Holy Spirit. Come now in power, cover this land, you've done 
Don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up high. Don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one true God. Fell in love with you. Take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where I am.
Uh, good morning, Edge Church. It's great to have you online this morning, wherever you are. Give you a massive welcome to church. As things stand this morning, this is the penultimate online church Sunday morning message. So things change. But as things stand at the moment, we are still at Green for Go for two weeks' time to meet live in church and to, uh, to reform and to relaunch and to re-party. So get ready for that. We'll give you more information as the uh, weeks, two weeks go on. Give you more information next Sunday and the, the days leading up to church to give you an idea of what it's going to look like and feel like. So we, uh, we're still planning for that. That hasn't changed. Two weeks today will be our first get-together service at the Royal Keys as a church. Good to have you with us this morning. I'm on part three. This is part three of a four-part message, which we'll finish next week. And the title of the message, if you haven't been with us or if you've forgotten, is the best team talk ever. And I'm talking about the best team talk ever. And what, I, what I'm going to read to you right now that, that David wrote in the Psalms, uh, to put it in context, this, this, what I'm going to read, these couple of verses, is, is all pre-battle. So if you can get this in, in your minds this morning, this might help you. This, this is all pre-battle attack. It's before the attack. It's before the battle. This is all pre-game. This is before the game begins. It's all pre-launch. It's all pre-plants. It, it's knowing, and this is why it's so important, it's knowing all the challenges ahead without knowing the results. So David is giving this team talk, this, this preach, whatever you want to call it, this teach, this rally cry, um, to his truth, before all of that stuff happens, before he knows the result of what he's getting into. And he simply says to his troops, and this is so positive, and it's a message that we need to hear today and in 2020 and whatever stuff we're going through the, this morning. David says to his troops, he says, before the battle, he says, when you win, he says, listen to this, we plan to raise the roof. And, and lead the parade with our banners. The best team talk ever. We plan to raise the roof and we plan to lead the parade with our banners when you win. It's the best team talk ever. I'm going to give you two, two main reasons this morning, if we get round to number two, two main reasons this morning why I believe that this beginning of the psalm is the best team talk ever. Number one this morning, let's get straight into the message. Everybody get straight in, get your notes out, get your, get your notes ready. This one's go straight in this morning. Number one, I believe it's the best team talk ever. Number one, because it looks forward. It looks forward. Are you writing that down? It looks, which way? It looks forward. It looks ahead. How many people know this morning when you're traveling on a train that the best seats are the ones facing forward. Yeah? Don't, don't book me a seat on a train where the seat is facing backwards. I like to see where I'm going. Anybody with me this morning watching or listening out there? They're the best seats. They're the seats that you book. Because it looks forward. It, it, it looks ahead. It doesn't look behind. It doesn't look where we are right now. But actually, the, this team talk it looks forward. And I believe this morning, and I, I'm sure you'll agree with me, that because you want to hear this kind of stuff, I believe that every good team talk, I believe that every good preach that is preached from a platform in church, I believe that every good message, wherever it comes from, I believe all those things look forward. They're the best ones. The best messages, the best preachers, the best team talks are the ones that, that look forward. Not the ones that look at my past. And not the ones that look where I am now, but, but the, the, the ones that look forward. It, it plans. You see, this team talk plans and dreams and points which way? Forward. It, it, it points ahead. It doesn't point to where we've been. It doesn't point to what is happening in our lives right now. But it points forward. That's why I believe this is the best team talk ever. We plan, David says, we plan. This is the plan. We plan to raise the roof. Can I ask you a question this morning, all those people watching and listening this morning on this, in this service? 
Can I ask you a question? And the question is this. What are you planning this morning? What are you planning? Um, and maybe the second question could be, are you planning or are you regretting? Are you planning this morning or are you mourning? Are you, are you regretting this morning? Are, are, you, are you mourning perhaps this morning over mistakes? Are you, are you regretting this morning over failure? Are you mourning this morning over missed opportunities? Are you, are you mourning over regrets? Is anybody this morning living in the regret of if only? Are you, are you regretting this morning and mourning over wasted time? David says the plan is we are not going to, to, to regret. We are not going to mourn. He says we plan to raise the roof. How many people this morning want to leave behind a life of regrets? You know, we, it's quite funny over the weeks that have gone by watching ourselves, um, those of you who've preached, watching yourselves um, on the screen, you know, I, I find it quite cringy, but I need to do because I need to learn what to do and what not to do again. So some things I do, um, I don't like, and some things I do, I, I really like, and I kind of, it's so good I make notes, but I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. And a few, you know, a few weeks ago, we, we, we sat down just as a family in our little, our little house, and we, and we, 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 we began to talk about, about messages that we preach and how we look on screen and how we, where you, how we appear on. And we're having a kind of critique meeting. I think, I think David started it off by sending us a message and then sending us um, a text about, about his preach and how he was critiquing his preach. And we said, it's not a great idea. Let's, let's critique ours. So, so, so Joy began to you know, say something about hers and, and I began to critique sometimes the way I the way I look or the way I sound. And we all waited for Hannah to begin the critique, to begin the, critique, to begin the self-criticism, which is fine. You know, it, it's good to critique yourself. And she was silent. And she says, well, she says, actually, um, I'm happy with it. I can't find anything wrong with the way I, the way I preach. No regrets. Do you see what I mean this morning? We're all, we're all sitting there kind of critiquing what we're doing with, with regrets and with kind of like, well, I wish I didn't. And she says, actually, I'm happy with it. And I think that's a great way to live, church. I think it's a great way to live with no regrets. Just to plan, plan ahead and plan forward. And we can spend our time morning and we can spend our time regretting. David said, hey, hey guys, listen this morning, whatever's happened in the past, we plan to raise the roof. It's time to take the roof off your mistakes. It's time to take the roof off your failures, failures to take the limits off. It's time to take the roof off your missed opportunities. Take, it's time to take the, 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 the roof off your regrets. It's time to take the roof off your wasted time. Have no ceiling, have no roof, and live no regrets. Look forward. Maybe this morning you're not looking forward to anything right now. And your mindset perhaps is stuck on, on the now that you're living in right now, on this Sunday morning, in this September 2020. Maybe it is possible this morning that there are people who, whose mindset is stuck on now. The situation you're in now, the problem you're in now, the job you're in now, the house you're in now, the relationship you're in now, the challenge you're in now, the sickness you're in now, the, you see where I'm coming from, the lack you're in now, the, the loneliness you're in now, the worry you're in now. But I want to I want to encourage people this morning, whatever you're living in now, I want to encourage you this morning, I dare you this morning, I challenge you this morning, I encourage you this morning to look forward. I challenge you and encourage you this morning, and I'm cheering you on this morning, not to look at where you are now, but to look at forward and to look at ahead. You see, David was so certain of the win. This, this guy was so full of confidence. He was so certain of the victory. And it seemed a little bit premature, because you've got to remember when, it, when he said, when you win, this is before the battle. This is before the challenge. This is before the attack. This is before 
the game. When he said when you win and when you're going to get the victory, it seems a little bit premature if you read it like that. It's, it's a little bit, and I'm not prophesying this, it's a little bit like painting a nursery blue without thinking it might be a girl. Do, 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 yeah? He was so sure that God was for him. He was so sure that God was behind him. He was so sure that, that his God, who would never know in defeat, would never suffer defeat. He was so sure that the God who led him through so many problems and so many valleys and so many... Ch- he was so sure that that same God was with him today and would be with him tomorrow and be with him next week and be with him next month and be with him through every fire and every attack. And I want to live like that, church. Start planning. He, he was so sure. He was so sure that he said to them, start planning your victory party right now. Whatever you're living in right now, he said, start planning your victory party. He said to them, start, start planning. I know, I know you haven't gone through the fire yet. He says to them, I know you haven't gone through the attack yet. I know you haven't defeated the enemy yet. But you know what he said to them? He said, hey guys, start planning your praise report right now. And isn't that a great way to live? But whatever we're going through right now, in the thick of the battle, in the thick of the attack, in the thick of the onslaught, in the face of the enemy, in the face of sickness, in the face of lack, in the face of uncertainty, David says, hey guys, start planning your praise report right now. Start planning what you were going to do when you win, right now. Start planning your emerging. Start planning your free from party. Start planning your free from death party. (laughs) Come on, can somebody say amen to that this morning? Even while you're in debt, start planning your free from debt party. Start planning your free from sickness party, even though this morning you haven't got your healing yet. Come on, who am I talking to? Start planning your free from depression party, even though this morning you're feeling low and you've had a week where you felt low. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that people at the moment do feel low and people do feel the, the, the cloud and the weight of depression over them. But hey, David says to his guys, listen guys, in the middle of your depression, start planning your free from depression party right now. You're free from fear party. You're free from prison party right here, right now. When you win, we plan to raise the roof. Can somebody say amen to that this morning? Isn't that a great, isn't that a great team talk? I just love that team talk. I feel encouraged already. I feel encouraged when David says to me, whatever you're going through right now, look forward, plan ahead. It'll free you from so much. Number two, the second reason why I believe this is the best team talk ever, and this is really important. So I want you to listen carefully to this this morning. The second reason why I believe it's the best team talk ever, number two, Write this down. It teaches me not to judge where I'm going by where I am right now. Have you got us out again? Have you got that? It teaches me not to judge where I'm going by where I am right now. So don't judge where you're going, right? By where you are right now. David preached this, and I said this before, right at the very start, David preached this, and David taught this, and David encouraged this before the battle. While his team was still nervous, while his team and his, and his army were still frightened, while his team were not winners yet, while his army were not winners yet, he talked about where they were going while they were still in preparation stage. And notice this, he didn't talk about what happened, he talked about what's next. Do you notice that? He never talks about any of the stuff they've been through or battled with or, or the lack they've had or what they didn't have, which we can so get caught up with, with, you know, this week and this month and this year. We can talk about all the stuff we can't do, right? Who am I talking to? We can talk about all the stuff we don't have. 
But David wouldn't have that. David said, no, 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 listen, listen, listen. listen. It's much better to talk about what's next. So whatever we don't have this morning, whatever we can't do this morning, come on, let's talk about what's next. I don't want to talk about the things I can't do. That will get me all down. That will get me all introvert. That will get me all frustrated. That will get me all angry. And that will get me on the streets protesting what I can't do and, and all that kind of stuff and where I can't go and what I can't do. And No, no, no. Come on, let's, let's talk about David. Said, Come on, let's talk about what's next. He didn't talk about what they did. He, talk about, he talked about what they were going to do. He says, when you win. But we haven't won yet. Come on, let's talk about it, Lord. But David, we're still, we're still under fire. Come on, let's talk about what's next. Let's talk about when you win. Let's talk about what you're going to do. Let's look forward. Come on, I want to encourage every single one of us this morning out there watching this from, from wherever you're watching it, whenever you're watching it. I want to encourage you this morning. Don't get caught up in, in what you can't do and what has happened and what you have done and what you haven't done or Come on, let me encourage you this morning. Talk about what's next. Go on, what's next for us? What's next for us as a church? I've got a couple of points to number two. Okay, so this is number one of number two, as we do in church. And this is something that's been on my heart all this week. And I believe this is for somebody who's watching this this morning and you're worried and you're stressed and you've shed tears this week. You're, you're at the end of you. You're at the end of your tether, as we say, over your kids, over your children. And I want to I want to I want to make this a point this morning. Okay, this is not a parenting class, although I think the two of us have got a pretty good record on raising three perfect children and two perfect grandchildren. Caleb and Faith are both perfect. Hey, and the next one's going to be even more perfect. Grandchildren I'm talking about, not children. So I think, I think we're pretty well qualified, although this isn't a parent in class. But can I just encourage a parent this morning who's, who's had the kind of week you, you'd rather not have had? Let me give you this point. Number one of number two. Don't judge where your kids are going by, what, by where they are right now. I'll say that again, okay? Don't judge where your kids are going by where they are right now. And this is for every concerned parent this morning. Every parent that's concerned about your children's future. Every parent that's concerned because your teenager in your family, in your life, the young adult in your life, does not look like they are passionate about God. Doesn't it look like this morning they're living church. Doesn't it look like this morning they're even interested in God things or faith things or kingdom things. Can I just say this to you this morning to every parent from a parent and to every grandparent from a grandparent. Don't give up on the young people in your life. And I really feel like something is so strong in my heart. I know that somebody wants to hear this. Don't give up on the young people, whether they are the moody 10-year-old who behaves like a 20-year-old to the critical, disinterested 16-year-old. Don't give up on them. I'll tell you the reason why. Because some of your kids are still caterpillars. Right? Some of your kids are still caterpillars. The faith is there. It just hasn't been released yet. Uh-huh. The change is happening in them. It's just a really slow change. A bit like a caterpillar crawling along, slow and steady, and seems like it's actually going backwards rather than forwards. But you, see, you see, the interest is there. It just has to go through stages yet. The caterpillar has to go through, through some stages before it becomes the flying butterfly 
that it was destined to be. And some of your kids this morning going through changes and challenges, and maybe part of that change is disinterest in God and no interest in church and no interest in kingdom. They'd rather get in trouble and they'd rather get in bother and, and, and all that kind of stuff. You, you, you've cried over them this week. Let me tell you something. Can I encourage you? Can I just come alongside you this morning as a parent and say, listen, there are caterpillars right now, but butterflies are coming out, out of them. There are butterflies coming. Hey, if we'd seen, if we had seen some of you and judged you, parents, when you were 15, 16, 25, I know some of you really churchy parents, right? And I, I, I do know, I wasn't brought up in a churchy family, but I know some of you churchy parents have been churchy all your life, right? And you, you're sitting here this morning thinking, oh, not me. No, 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 you can't be talking to me. I was never a caterpillar. I became a butterfly. Went, and listen, I, I, I know that you went to all the conferences. Uh -huh. I know you went to all the conventions in your butter wouldn't melt burrows. I know, I know. And pastors' kids are the worst. Uh huh, come on. It's not a guilt trip, but come on, let, let's be real this morning. If we'd seen some of you, if you had been in the most likely to become competition. And can I talk to the kids who were sitting with you this morning? Kids, you really don't want to know what your parents did at your age. Oh, yes, they say, I went to all the conferences. The kids don't do that anymore. I went to all the conventions. Yes, but you only went to see who the good-looking guys were from other churches, right? Because there's no, ugly, or there's no nice guys in your church. Come on, am I right this morning? All you, all you, God, uh, come on, be real. <laughs> kids, you don't want to know what they did, right? You would be shaking your head and touching your parents. In fact, give, give them a good shake of the head right now. And give them a touch. Mom, Dad, really? Hey, I think most of them turned out okay though, right? Most of them turned out okay. <laughs> Listen, if you had told the Apostle Paul when he was still Saul that he was ever going to be a Christian leader write two-thirds of the New Testament, he would have chopped you down on the spot. Right? Have you got that? If you told the Apostle Paul when he was Saul that he was ever going to be a Christian leader, a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, he would have killed you there and then. Paul says in 1 Timothy 1.15, this is how bad he was. 1 Timothy, this is why you should never give up on your teenagers, never give up on your kids, never give up on your 10-year-olds, never give up on those young people, adults in your life. This is why, because 1 Timothy 1.15, Paul wrote this, and he says to Timothy, listen, Timothy, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief, chief of sinners. The Apostle Paul says this. He says, whatever you've done, whatever your kids have done, Paul says, I outdid them. I've outdone them. If there was hope for me, Paul says, there's hope for you and hope for them. You see, because, because Saul was a caterpillar and Paul was the butterfly, that's why you should never give up on them. Pray for them. Encourage them in good things. Be a good example to your kids. Some of you this morning are sitting and you've got some Pauls in your life. You've got some Pauls in your house right now. You've got some Pauls in your family right now who are still Saul. Don't judge them just yet. Do not write them up. Don't, do not write them off just yet. You're worrying about the Saul when you should be preparing and celebrating the Paul. Look ahead. They're going to become a Paul one day. You're stressing about the caterpillar when you should be looking for the butterfly in their lives. It will come. Give them time. Just be there with them. Be there for them. Number two for people this morning. Different subject altogether, but number two. Don't judge. This is probably for 
the Christians and believers and maybe part of their church this morning or whatever church you belong to, don't judge where the church is going by where it is right now. Did you write that down? In actual fact, you, could always, you, could, you can put underneath that, I will not judge, with your hand on your heart, I will not judge where the church is going by where it is right now. Some of us need to do that. We need to make a dedication this morning. We need to, to pray that kind of prayer this morning. I will not judge where the church is going by where the church is right now. If we as Edge Church had done that a few years ago, we wouldn't be here right now. David says we plan. Listen, guys, we plan to raise the roof and lead the parade with banners. We are going to have a celebration party, he says. He says, I'm looking forward to the praise party. I'm looking forward to the worship party. I'm looking forward to the, to the getting back together party, even if we have to wear masks and keep one meter apart. He says, nevertheless, look forward. We plan for the future, even though right now it's imperfect. We plan for the future, even though right now it's hard. We plan for the future, even though right now it's less. We plan for the future, even though right now it's so tough. We still look ahead. We still look forward. We still plan. The church is a caterpillar. You know, it might look small when we get back together again. It might look a bit slow. We may come together in two weeks' time and not quite know exactly what we're doing. What we're doing. And I'm telling you that right now. It might not look pretty. But I want to tell you something. If you hang in there long enough, if you stay long enough, if you come and join with us as a community long enough, there's a butterfly coming out of the caterpillar. It's slowness. It's not pretty. But it's coming. 1 Kings 18.41. You can't talk about this subject without referring back to 1 Kings 18. The story of Elijah. You know the story. Talk about making bold statements. Elijah goes to King Ahab, bearing in mind it hadn't rained or any kind of dew for three years. It had been dry for three years. Now, come on, guys. We've only had six months, seven months by the time we get back together, seven months of dryness, seven months of no rain, if you want to put it like that. Three years, no rain, no dew. Elijah says this to King Ahab. He says to the king, he says, Get ready, go up and eat and go up and drink. For there is a sound, he's like, I can hear something. He says, there's a sound of the abundance of rain. The message says, I hear it coming. I hear it coming. Some of us leaders and some of the pastors hear rain when nobody else does. Leaders and pastors and preachers see blessing when nobody else does. We see growth and we see increase when nobody else does. David's, David's a leader and David's a preacher and David's a teacher and David's a pastor. He says, listen guys, we're planning to raise the, the roof when everybody else is nervous. When everybody else is fearful, when everybody else is worried I tell you what, in, in 2020, we need that kind of spirit. We really seriously do. We need that kind of spirit. We need a whatever it takes spirit. There might be challenges. Huh, dare I mention them? There might be face coverings. There might be distancing. There might be no loud, projective singing. And, you know, speaking as a leader, we can either have a, well, I'm not going. If it's going to be like that, too restrictive, not the same. I'm not going. I can't cope with that. We can either choose to have that kind of spirit. Are you listening to me? We can either, whatever, whatever church you're going back to, it's going to be the same. So whether it, you leave church and go to some other church, it's going to be the same. So you might as well stay. 
We can either have a, well, I'm not going, well, I can't cope with that, well, what's the point? Or stay at home and catch it up later on TV. We can either have that kind of spirit or we can have a whatever it takes spirit. Whatever it takes, I'm going to get back to church and I'm going to get back and join the family and the community and we're going to celebrate. We plan to raise the roof, even though there are restrictions and, and awkwardness. Whatever it takes, whatever the challenge, whatever discomfort, instead of problems, find solutions. Are you with me? Let me give you one more before we finish. Got five minutes, I'm going to finish. This is a personal one for people, right? The first one was about your kids. The second one was about the church. This one's about you. Let me finish with this, the last point. Don't judge where you are going to be and where you are going to be and who you are going to be by who you are and where you are right now. I'll say that again. It's a long point. I'll say it slowly, right? Don't judge where you are going to be and where you're going to be and who you're going to be by who you are and where you are right now. Don't judge yourself by where you are right now. You see, when, when Elijah's told, when Elijah told the, the, the king to get ready, I can hear the sound of abundance of rain, it gets even worse than that. I mean, that's, that's diabolical. Three years of drought, and he's the only one that can hear it. It gets worse than that. In 1 Kings 18, 44, you, you probably know the story quite well, but he, he told his servant to go and look for the rain. And after seven times of seeing nothing, his servant came back. He said, well, Elijah, I see a cloud, and it's, it's as small as a man's hand. I do see something happening, Elijah, but... I've got to tell you, it's not worth shouting about or preaching about or getting excited about or planning a party about. I see something where it's so small. And all the critics will come out of the closet and say, well, it doesn't look like, much like a, a deluge to me, right? Elijah, you got that wrong. Well, Elijah, are you still hearing heavy rain? Well, Elijah, are you still hearing increase? Are you still seeing growth? When all your servant can see is something little, the critic and the complainer see the small, the silence, the impossibilities. But the Elijahs in the room see potential. Where the small, there is potential. The Elijahs in the room hear the rumbling. The Elijahs in the room see the small growing. The Elijahs in the room see the caterpillar becoming a butterfly. The critic and the complainer sees caterpillars. <laughs> but the Elijahs, how many Elijahs am I talking to you this morning? Right here, right now, this Sunday morning, you might be surrounded by people who are all critics, who have a caterpillar mentality. It's never going to change. It's slow. It's small. It's little. And I am, I am urging every Elijah this morning to stand up and to rise up. That when you go back to your church, that when you go back to your home, that when you look yourself in the mirror and you're praying, that you don't see the caterpillar, you see the butterfly. That this morning you don't see the negative. See the potential. He, hear the rumbling. See the small growing. Find solutions over problems. How many Elijahs am I talking to right here, right now, this morning, who need to hear that message? I'm praying for you. I'm praying over your families this morning. I'm praying, praying over your kids this morning. I might not even know them, but I'm praying over them this morning for that 10-year-old, for that 16-year-old, for that 25-year-old that still hasn't progress and still hasn't found faith and you've prayed and you've cried and you've wept 
and you question God and you cry to God. Um, we, we, we're praying for you this morning. Us church, we're praying for you. Um, we're praying for church this morning. When we come back in two weeks' time, that we'll see chair upon chair of Elijah's. But Elijah's come into the, the room. Elijah's come into the house to quieten the critics and the complainers. But Elijah's rise up to see the potential and come out and say, this is great, this is good. We've had seven months in a cave. And this is so good. We've had seven months looking at caterpillars. Look at this butterfly this morning. Come on, let's have that kind of spirit, church. I'm praying for you this morning. Believing for you this morning because you, you think you're nothing. You think you're nowhere. You're surrounded this morning by problems. You're surrounded by mistakes. You're surrounded by failure. Surrounded by sin. And I'm praying for you this morning that you won't judge where you're going and who you are by who you are and where you are right now. Look forward. We plan to raise the roof. Look forward. Look ahead. In Jesus' name. Are you receiving this this morning? Are you receiving it? I've enjoyed it. I don't know about you, but I've enjoyed it. If nobody else has enjoyed it, that's okay. I'll, I'll put something in the chat and say, Dad, that was good. I'll set up a fake account and say, that was, that was amazing. Best word I've ever heard this morning. Love, Mickey Mouse. I'll put a... Hey, have a great week. Will you live this week with that kind of spirit? We look forward to two weeks' time with that kind of spirit. I challenge you, I encourage you this morning in Jesus' name. Have a fantastic week. Thank you for listening. Uh, we'll see you next Sunday. God bless every single one of you this morning. Amen. And God bless the United States of America and the United Kingdom. Amen.